great weekend. We had a wonderful turnout in Council Bluffs. We had, I think, almost an historical climate change conference in Des Moines. And thank you all very much for being out here tonight. Uh, let me thank Pet Cemetery for their music, Yoke War, for his great music. Let me thank one of the great political leaders in the state of Iowa for his support. Thank you, Stacey Walker. Let me thank Councilman Rockney Cole. Let me thank one of the great and important writers in America, Naomi Klein, for all that she does. Let me thank Nick Salazar for the great work that he is doing. And last but not least, let me thank a young woman who in less than one year, hard to believe that Alexandria has been in Congress for less than one year. But during that time, she has inspired millions of working people and young people throughout this country and has helped transform politics. Alexandria, thank you so much for all you're doing. I think I'm going to make a very short speech because Alexandria said it all. What can I say? What am I left to say here? All right, what this campaign is about is really, and I say this honestly, is a unique and unprecedented campaign. And the reason for that is it goes without saying that we're here to win in Iowa, and with your support, we will. It goes without saying that we are intending to win the Democratic nomination. With your help, we will. And needless to say, it means that we are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of this country. And I am more than aware of the election results in Iowa in 2016. But I believe that irregardless of one's political views, the people of Iowa, the people of America understand that it is not acceptable that we have a president who is a pathological liar, <laughs> that we have, and again, people can have different points of view, but nobody I know believes that we should have a president who is running one of the most corrupt administrations in the history of this country. People understand that we cannot continue to have a president who is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, and a religious bigot. So we may, I understand, believe me, I understand that not everybody in Iowa agrees with everything I say. I got that. One or two people disagree. But on the other hand, I hope and do believe that the majority of the people in this state and in this country understand that the person in the White House is not somebody by temperament who should remain there. Yep. But our campaign is unique, not only because we intend to defeat Donald Trump, we are unique because we understand that at this moment in history, it is imperative to transform this entire country. That it is imperative that finally we create an economy, a government, and an energy system that works for all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. Here is something else that makes our campaign unique. 
And that is the message of our campaign is us, not me. And that message deals with two realities, and Alexandria touched on one of them. And that is the understanding that what human life is about, what the good life is about, is for me to know that when your family is in trouble, my family has got to be there for you. You're not alone, you're not isolated. And that when my family hurts, you are there for me, because as we go through the struggle of life, we have got to be in it together, to support each other, to love each other. That unlike Trump and his friends, who believe that greed and corruption is what life is about, we believe in love and compassion and bringing people together around those values. But there is another meaning when we talk about us, not me. And no other candidate will tell you this, but it is the truth. And that is no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, no matter how honest or well-intentioned he or she may be, no president can do it alone without a strong grassroots movement Because we understand that real power in this country rests with a corporate elite, and I'm talking about Wall Street, I'm talking about the insurance companies, I'm talking about the drug companies, I'm talking about the fossil fuel industry, I am talking about the military industrial complex about the prison industrial complex and I'm talking about the whole damn one percent so what our campaign is about is not only defeating Trump it is creating a government and an economy that works for all of us but what we understand is that the only way real change takes place is never from the top on down, it is always from the bottom on up. That is the history of the labor movement. That is the history of the civil rights movement. That is the history of the women's movement. That is the history of the gay rights movement. And that is the history of the environmental movement. So when I am in the Oval Office having my little chat with Wall Street and the truck companies, I think my message to them is not do the right thing, my message is that tens of millions of people are telling you to do the right thing. Our campaign is going to end a corrupt political system dominated by billionaires and wealthy campaign contributors. Our campaign is going to end the grotesque level of income and wealth inequality which exists in America today. So tonight we say to Michael Bloomberg and other billionaires, sorry, you ain't gonna buy this election.
are not going to get elected president by avoiding Iowa, by avoiding New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada. You're not going to buy this election by spending hundreds of millions of dollars on media in California. Those days are gone. The right reason why we are going to win this election is because we have well over a million volunteers in every congressional district in America. We have thousands of volunteers here in Iowa knocking on doors and making phone calls. And yes, we don't have a super PAC, and I am not worth $52 billion. But this is what we do have. We have raised more campaign contributions from more Americans averaging $16 a donation than any candidate up to this point in the history of American politics. Bloomberg can have his billions, but that is why we are going to win this election. And when we talk about a new vision for America, what we understand is we will not allow Donald Trump to divide us up based on the color of our skin or where we were born or our sexual orientation or our religion. We are going to win this election because we're bringing our people together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American. We're bringing our people together around an agenda that works for all of us. And Alexandria touched on this point, and it's a very important point, and I want to pick up where she left off. Our major obstacle is not Wall Street, and it's not the drug companies, the insurance companies, the 1%, and all their billions of dollars. Our major obstacle is what the establishment does to us every single day in limiting our imagination as to where we go into the future. The message that comes down every day from the political establishment, from the economic establishment, from the media establishment, is that don't think big, don't have dreams, don't have a vision, don't have new ideas, because you are powerless, you're nothing. Real power rests with the people on top. What this campaign is about is fundamentally changing that dynamic and understanding that real power rests with us, not the one percent. And what this campaign is about is understanding that the working families of this country are sick and tired of working longer hours for lower wages while almost all new wealth and income goes to the top 1%. Working families of this country are sick and tired of seeing three people own more wealth than the bottom half of America. Of the 1% owning more wealth than the bottom 92%, of 49% of all new income going to the top 1%. So I say to Michael Bloomberg and his billionaire friends, that is going to change.
Now, one of my heroes, one of my heroes, and I know your hero as well, a man named Nelson Mandela. And Mandela spent much of his adult life in hard labor in jail because he stood up against the obscenity and vulgarity of apartheid in South Africa. And I want to just give you a quote, a very profound quote uh, that came from Mandela. And this is what he said. He said, it always seems impossible until it is done. It always seems impossible until it is done. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that the system tries to tell you that we cannot accomplish our dreams. And this comes from a man who walked out of jail to become president of his country. And what that means, what that means is we will never accomplish our goals if we do not believe we can accomplish those goals. If we believe that all we are worth as workers are eight or nine bucks an hour, that is all we will ever get. If we believe that we are not entitled to health care as a human right, we will never have health care. So our job is to have the courage to envision the kind of America we want and to have the guts to fight for that America. So what is our agenda? Let me be very brief and tell you what it is. It's getting complicated. We believe that economic rights are human rights. Yeah, it's great to be able to vote every two years or every four years, but you're not really free if you're making eight bucks an hour and you're working 60 hours a week. You're not really free if you can't afford to go to a doctor when you're sick. You're not free if you can't afford to get the higher education that your dreams want you to get. So what we are saying is, number one, education is a human right. Every Every psychologist who studies the issue <clears throat> will tell you that zero through four are the most important years of intellectual and emotional development. And yet we have a pre-K and child care system that is completely dysfunctional and unaffordable. Well, if you love America, you love the children, we are going to have universal, high-quality, affordable child care. We are going to have the best public educational system in the world. And I want the best and brightest to go into teaching and education because they are going to be respected and well compensated for the enormously important work they do. I want young people to say, I am so proud that I am a teacher and impacting the lives of thousands of children. And we are going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. And we are going to cancel all student debt in America. Now, my critics, who are legion, they say, hey, Bernie, that sounds nice, all these free things. How are you going to pay for it? Well, you know, I, I think back. 
Eleven years ago, against my vote, Congress bailed out the crooks on Wall Street. Nobody worried about paying for that. Last year, two years ago, Trump and his friends gave a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the one percent and large profitable corporations. Nobody worried about that. Today, we're providing hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks and subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. Well, what we are going to do is impose a very modest tax on Wall Street speculation to pay for free tuition and canceling all student debt. If we could bail out the crooks on Wall Street, we could bail out the middle class of this country. Four years ago, I came to Iowa and I said what people thought was a very radical idea, and that is that health care is a human right, not a privilege. That idea ain't so radical anymore, because people understand the cruelty and the waste and the dysfunctionality of the current health care system. In America, we should not be spending twice as much per person as the people of Canada or European countries while they manage to provide health care to all of their people. <laughs> Meanwhile, in our country, 87 million are uninsured or underinsured and 500,000 people go bankrupt every year because of medical bills. Now, can you appreciate the insanity and cruelty of a system that says, oh, you were diagnosed with cancer, you're a working class person, and you're now undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And if that's not bad enough, you're going to go bankrupt because you can't afford to pay the bills. That is disgusting. That is not what this country is about. Last year, last year the healthcare industry made a hundred billion dollars in profit. Well, tonight we tell the healthcare industry the function of health care is to provide quality care to all, not to huge profits to the industry and to Wall Street. And that is why, brothers and sisters, whether the insurance companies and the drug companies like it or not, we are going to pass a Medicare for all single payer program. When we talk about the economy, you believe, and I believe, that if somebody works 40 hours a week, that person does not have to live in poverty. We're going to raise that minimum wage to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour. You want to hear a really, really radical idea? All right, you ready for this? I don't want people collapsing. What about equal pay for equal work for women? And what about making it easier, not harder, for workers to join unions? And when we talk about the major issues facing not only our country, but the world, what we understand, which tragically the current president does not, is that climate change is not a hoax, but it is an incredibly dangerous reality for Iowa, for Vermont, for America, and for the entire world. And I'm very proud to have been working with Alexandria, who came up with an outline called the Green New Deal. 
and we built on that outline to create the most comprehensive climate change plan ever introduced by any presidential candidate in the history of this country. And tonight we tell the fossil fuel industry that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. And whether they like it or not, we are going to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And in the process, we are going to create up to 20 million good-paying jobs. And when we talk about our progressive agenda, it is an agenda that says we are going to end a broken and racist criminal justice system. It is an international embarrassment that we have more people in jail in America than any country on earth. Two million people. And that is why we are going to invest in jobs and education for our young people, not more jails or more incarceration. We are going to end private prisons and detention centers. We are going to end the war on drugs Legalize marijuana and expunge the records of all those who were arrested for possession of marijuana. And we are going to end a system of cash bail which allows, and this is unbelievable and a lot of people don't know it, tonight as we speak, 400,000 people are behind bars, convicted of nothing. They were arrested, charges were made out against them, they were convicted of nothing, but they cannot afford the $500 or the $1,000 in bail to get out of jail. We're going to end that cash bail system. We are going to reform a very, very broken immigration system. We are going to stop the demonization of the immigrant community. We are going to pass, we are going to pass comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. On day one, through executive order, we are going to restore the legal status of the 1.8 million young people eligible for the DACA program. And under our administration, we will develop a humane policy at the border. Government agents will no longer snatch babies from the arms of their mothers. Families will not be separated, and children will not be thrown into cages. And we are going to end the ice raids that are terrorizing communities all over the country. All of us are horrified and disgusted by the level of gun violence and gun massacres in this country. And what we are going to do is develop gun policy 
that works for the American people, that is developed by the American people, and not the NRA. We are going to provide universal and expanded background checks. We're going to end the gun show loophole. We are going to end the so-called straw man provision, which allows people to legally buy guns and sell them to criminal elements. And we are going to ban the sale and distribution of assault weapons in America. I am a United States Senator, and I'm on the floor of the Senate often. And I hear many of my conservative colleagues talk about their view of limited government, of government getting government off the backs of the American people. Well, I say to those conservatives, if you want to get government off the backs of the American people, understand that it is women, not the government, who have the right to control their own bodies. conservative hypocrisy. And I can tell you for sure that it was the men in this country who were having the babies. Their views would change overnight. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I don't have to tell you, because you already know, that we are living in an unprecedented moment in American history. We have a president who thinks he's above the law, a president who clearly has never read the Constitution of the United States, and a president who I believe and will be impeached. But our issues go beyond Donald Trump, they really do. And they go to the fact that if we do not act aggressively in an unprecedented way, the planet that we will be leaving our children and grandchildren will be increasingly unhealthy and uninhabitable. And if we don't, if that's not enough, we have a nation in which we are moving toward an oligarchic form of society. Where a billionaire class believes that they have the right to control the economic, political, and media life of our nation. That is where we are. That's where we are. And these are huge problems. And the only way that I know that we address these problems, and what history tells us is the only way, is to create an unprecedented grassroots movement which reclaims this country from the billionaire class. Now, I'm a senator, and I can tell you from personal experience that the 1% are incredibly powerful. They have more money than you can dream of. They have unlimited funds to put ugly ads on television, to fund think tanks, to do all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, the 1% is 1%. And we are 99%. And if we do not allow Trump and his friends to divide us up, if we are prepared to stand together, if we are prepared to get involved in the political process in a way that we have never done before. And here in Iowa, I don't have to tell anybody here, this state plays a very outsized role in the American political process. 
That's what it does. You go first. And I believe that if you are prepared to work hard, to knock on doors, to make the phone calls, to talk to your friends. We got some 2,000 people here. If each one of you reaches out to three people, that 2,000 becomes 8,000. Is that right? 6,000 plus 2,000. All right, that's it. That's what it's about. And you have friends who don't vote. You have friends who have given up on the political process. Tell them that you're tired of their complaining. Tired of their complaining about low wages, lack of health care, student debt, climate change, racism, sexism, homophobia. Tell them the time for complaining is over. The time to get the work is now. And I believe, I believe that in this state, Iowa, we have just so many thousands of volunteers that if you work with our volunteers, we're going to win here in Iowa. And if we win here in Iowa, we're going to win big in New Hampshire. And we're going to win in Nevada. And we're going to do really well in South Carolina. We're going to win in California. And you know what? When we do that, we got a direct path toward victory. And when we become the Democratic nominee, we're not only going to beat Trump, we're going to beat him badly. But the day after we are inaugurated, I'm going to come back to you because our job will not be finished just with a victory. We need to come together as a strong political movement of millions of people who stand up proudly and are telling the corporate elite that the principles of this country are not greed and corruption, but the principles of our administration will be justice. Economic justice, social justice, racial justice, environmental justice. That is who we are. That is what we believe. And if we stand together, roll up our sleeves, we are not only going to win this election, we're going to transform this country. Thank you all very much.